Expired. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gohmert, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Deputy Attorney General, a uh, common theme, it seems, uh, to many of your responses has been basically, uh, gee, I wasn't here then, that wasn't me, I didn't personally do that, I didn't redact Judge Contreras' name from the documents uh, so Congress couldn't see that he was friend struck, that was someone else. But you have added quite pointedly to Mr. Jordan that I am the Deputy Attorney General, and you certainly are. Um, but the actions of your subordinates, which are all employees of the Department of Justice, um, aren't you vouching for those? Don't those people respond to you? Those people all ultimately report to me, yes, sir. And that would include uh, when Bruce Orr's office was directly next to yours, I believe. Isn't that correct? And he worked for you? He worked in the Deputy Attorney General's office. I think it was a couple of doors down, but yes. Okay, a couple of doors down. Um, well, we're aware, aware of some of the events that occurred before your confirmation as the Deputy Attorney General. Um, however, some of your team members certainly were involved. So I want to ask, uh, was Tashina Gahar your deputy or uh, Trishina, I'm sorry, Trisha Anderson involved in any stage of drafting, editing, or approving the four uh, FISA applications uh, to spy on Carter Page? I wasn't sure if you were directing that question to me, but I, the Congressman, I don't, sitting here right now, I don't know exactly who was involved in drafting what FISA application. Um, so just to be clear, apparently, Director Ray, you have to ans answer for the Deputy Attorney General about FISA applications he signed? Oh, oh, no, no you, you were asking about... Uh, yeah, the four applications to spy on Carter yes, Page. Yes. Uh, and I think you've been a bit vague on whether you even uh, signed no, one of no, the FISA. No, no, sir. Let, let me try to clarify for you, if I may. Well, did Again, you sign the fourth FISA application? I approved the filing of a... Uh, basically okay. What's now, you say you account. approved that yes, application. Yes. Now, that's going that's before job. a that's FISA... That's my job, sir. That's your job. Okay. You approved it. Well, when you approve a FISA application, in your mind, does that mean you should read it and understand what's part of it? You should certainly understand what's part of it, sir. But that, said, you're parsing words, so that doesn't mean you need to read it, in your opinion. Is that correct? It depends on the circumstances, sir, and... Uh, well, telling you, being a former felony state judge, yes. if I had somebody like you come before me, and now it was not revealed later the judge, that the guy that signed and approved an application for a warrant I don't had not even the read the application that would allow spying on somebody. Would I would look at everything he signed from then on with a jaundiced eye. And I'm telling you, I was a little concerned Give about even... Give me a chance even, to explain, sir. Well, it, you have. You've said... No, I have not. ...approve it. Well, I did approve it. I didn't did ask that it. question because you the said you approved it, but you took out the words the that you from read Texas it. Will and so it is gentleman my from time. Texas will suspend. I just want to make it clear to Deputy Attorney General, you will be afforded Thank a full you, opportunity to respond once his time has expired. If he wants to yield to you during that and time. My time continued to run while the chairman took up some of my time. So you'll have that uh, too. And, and actually, I was being interrupted. I did not have a question. I was taking the words that the Deputy Attorney General himself said. So, well, let me ask you about this. You said earlier Bruce Orr was not working on the Russia investigation. Let me ask you. To my the, knowledge. To your knowledge. Did you not know that Bruce Orr was meeting with... Christopher Steele getting the information about the, the dossier and supplying that information to the FBI at the same time Nelly was working for Fusion GPS that was helping Hillary Clinton. Did you not know he was doing that for the FBI? Correct. You did not know that? Correct. Okay. So he officed a couple of doors down, but you had no idea that he was actually the go-between to get that information. So when did you find out about that? So as I said, sir, the inspector general is reviewing these FISAs, and I hope I have an opportunity to 
Explain. Well, let me I just say, why you, don't you look at the deputy, uh, look at the uh, summary. The uh, Mr. Horowitz said, we did not have confidence that Strzok's decision to prioritize Russia investigation over following up on the mid-year related investigation led uh, lead discovered on the um, Wiener laptop was free from bias. Uh, pretty clear to most of us, his time. bias did affect that decision, and it... And the time of you, the gentleman has expired. The Deputy Attorney General may respond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I apologize. I thought you were asking me questions, sir. Uh, I completely understand your concern. Uh, and this FISA process is being reviewed by the Inspector General. If he finds some problem with it, I'll respect that. Now, we don't talk about FISAs. It's illegal for us to talk about FISAs. And this particular example is a result of uh, the Intelligence Committee. Certain information was declassified, and so I'm comfortable talking about that. Uh, you, you have to understand in context, sir, that the Department had made the decision to disclose the existence of a FISA to the House and Senate before I got there, before I got there. Now, what I signed was what's called a renewal application. It had already been approved three different times by a federal judge. It was signed under oath by an FBI agent who attested that it was true and correct. Now, if he was wrong, we'll hold him accountable. But let's allow the process uh, to conclude before we jump to conclusions about that, uh, because I assure you, sir, I'll be just as you if I find there was some incorrect information in that application. Well, Mr. Chairman, since uh, we've learned that uh, he relies heavily on people that were part of his team to do these uh, applications, I don't think we can get to the truth until we question to Sheena Gahar and Tricia Anderson, and uh, that would also include why she uh, slow walks the notices of NSC meetings to the Attorney General when she's working for the DAG just to make him look bad. So we need to get those two people in here the and question comments. them. Mr. Gentlemen's Chairman, if I back. The respond, uh, you know, if there's any evidence of wrongdoing, sir, by anyone on my staff or anyone in the department, I would expect you to give them fair process bring the information to my attention or the Inspector General's attention. Let's hear both sides and then let's reach the conclusion. I think what's important to understand, and I understand the FISA process is, is very obscure to most people, but these are essentially search warrant affidavits. A federal agent has to swear under oath that everything in that application is true. And then there are review processes within the FBI and within the department. Ultimately, the decision is made by a federal judge. There can be mistakes, and we'll find out if there are any mistakes in this one, but it's not a matter of just slapping a document and signing it. It's a very thorough process, and in that particular case, four different federal judges found probable cause. The inspector general will review it, and uh, I'll await those conclusions, sir, but I just would encourage you not to jump to any conclusions that I or anybody else did anything wrong.